So you're standing at train tracks. A train blows past you, and you noticed that as the train got closer to you, the pitch of the train horn sounded higher. As it went away from you, you noticed that the train horn sounded lower. This is known as the Doppler effect. I'm Chris Murray, I teach physics at Twalton High School, and every year I teach the Doppler effect to kids. One of the most confusing things about the Doppler effect is when you use the plus and when you use the minus. Last year I had a student, uh, Ashley Slater, who came up with a I think an innovative way to remember when you use the plus, when you use the minus for source and observer. And the interesting thing was that there were some kids in the class that didn't understand it until she explained it to them. So I think this is something that could help kids anywhere in the world. In short, it's the change in pitch when an object moves closer to you, further away from you, or both. <laughs> Just like that. The Doppler effect was first proposed in 1842 by Christian Doppler, an Australian mathematician and physicist. It was originally designed to help us determine the Doppler of galaxies and stars, or their radial velocities. The radial velocity of a star or galaxy is how fast it's moving towards us. Today, we use the Doppler effect to help us determine the weather, specifically if there's any chance of tornadoes or hurricanes, to help us catch speeders red-handed, and to track the blood flow through the heart using the NDO cardiogram. Let's jump into my laboratory. I'll show you how it works. Okay, so this is a stationary wave. The wavelengths in between are all the same. This is moving source. Moving source means that something is moving while emitting the sound. Because it is moving, there will be shorter frequencies in the front and longer frequencies in the back. And lastly, we have moving observer. This is where you're entering a sound, and as you're reaching the center, the sound waves are gonna be moving past you faster, which will increase the pitch. As you're exiting, the pitch will be lower. A good rule of thumb for the Doppler formula is to know that when you have a higher frequency, you're gonna use a positive sign. When you have a lower frequency, you're gonna use a negative sign. That is, of course, unless you have an approaching or receding source in which it is reversed and this is where things get tricky. These are the two Doppler formulas, source and observer. Notice a positive or negative. This is why I said things get tricky. It is reversed, which means that what is positive and negative for observer will be negative and positive for source. I got really frustrated in my room one night. I decided that there had to be a better way to solve these, something more time efficient. Meet your new best friend, Arso. ARSO stands for Approaching, Receding, Source, Observer. A good way to remember ARSO is to write it so that you will always remember it. How I do it is A, R, S, O, negative, positive, negative, positive. This goes in the shape of a shell. Let me show you how ARSO works in action. A car with a 256 hertz horn approaches you at 40 meters per second. What frequency do you hear? Because we know that this is a source, which is the car, and it is approaching you, we know that if this is source and this is approaching, it is going to be negative. Plugging this in to our source equation, which is F prime equals F times the speed of sound divided by the speed of sound minus the velocity of the source we will get that 256 times 343 divided by 343 minus 40 equals 289.8 hertz. The fantastic thing about ARSO is I always know I'm picking the right sign even in a quadruple step multi-shift problem. Ignore all of this work. Only focus on the positive and negatives. I was able, by using ARSO, to quickly and efficiently solve this problem without having to worry if my notation was correct. So I can jump into any Doppler situation and always know the correct notation to use. I'm Ashley Slater, and this is your best friend, ARSO.